Good morning, it's De Wednesday, December 27th. Doing our walk here at the Green Belt today. We're starting off here at the Indian Trail Trailhead, Kingsport, Tennessee. Let's see, we got a map of the trail over here. Road Indian Trail Drive. Indian Trail Drive Trailhead is that that's where we're at. I'm gonna walk down this way. And actually, let's walk this way. Up towards Stonebrook. I don't know how far that is. It's another rainy and wet day here. Ducks are loving it. It's about 51 degrees. Let's go. Right here behind the Pet Smart. So today's walk, W-A-L-C. That's an acronym I came up with. It represents four ideas. There's a belted kingfisher up there. Um, the W, these, okay, the purpose of my video is basically is for my own benefit in uh, creating and maintaining positive, healthy uh, mental and physical habits. So the WALK acronym stands for W is walking and exercise. Walking is, I think, the best exercise you can do. A stands for appreciation of nature. I think out here in nature and photographing birds and Looks like some mushrooms there. Um, appreciation of nature, you know, lowers the blood pressure. It's good for the mental health. And it's a great way to start the day. Um, the L stands for literature and learning. Basically, the idea there is feeding my mind with positive material every day. So I will be, at the end of the video, I'm going to be reading a little bit out of a book every video. Because I got some books I want to read, but I just don't find the time to read them. So if I just read a paragraph a day or a page or two or three minutes or whatever, then that's up, you know, that'll accumulate over time. So that's the L. And then the C is community and interaction. I work online on uh, the computer all day long, so it's very isolating. So, you know, community and interaction. That's these videos, community, uh, interacting with the viewers, you guys, and, uh, you know, out here on the trail, seeing people, greeting people. So it gets me out of the isolation of being on the computer all day. So that's the, the WALK acronym. Is that a mockingbird? Must be. It's letting me get close. Here come the Canadian geese. Hello, gooseys. I love seeing geese fly in formation like that. It's so cool. Starting to get some sprinkles again today. It's been raining for like three days now, ever since Christmas. So hopefully it doesn't start coming down any harder. Squirrel up there hopping from tree to tree.
Looks like some Carolina wrens in there. Yeah. Got a bunch of birds over here. See if I can get some pictures, see if I can identify what we have here. Downy woodpecker. So yeah, I've seen a lot of different birds right here in this area. And all this brush. I think I saw a song sparrow. Downy woodpecker. Possibly Tufted titmouse. A lot of times I can't uh, tell what I've taken a picture of until I get home and download them onto the laptop and I can zoom in and crop the photo and then I can see what I actually got a shot of. Because if it is not close out here, my eyesight's not great. It's not bad, but it's not great. So, yeah, it's easier to tell once I've edited the footage. There's a blue jay and a cardinal. A lot of little birds up in here. Right in this area. Hmm, I wonder if it has something to do with these bird feeders out here. Got one there and one down there. So we're coming up here to where we're going to turn around. Let's see where we're at. So we're here at the Stonebrook Place Trailhead. And we started here at the Indian Trail Drive trailhead and we've walked up here to the Stonebrook place trailhead you got a three mile there and then you got five mile there so that's about two miles that's about what my phone says so it's two miles up here so it'll be two miles back so that'll be about four mile walk total today there's a chickadee up there or something Try to get a picture of that bird. Blue Jays in the rain. So there I think is a, is it a hawk or is it an owl? I don't know. It's sitting on that branch. You got all these crows going crazy. Let me see if I can get a photo. So yeah, I believe it's a, possibly a red-tailed hawk. It flew away, I got a picture of it, so we'll see what it is. But it's still, it's right up here. 
setting up there. It was right here on this branch. I believe that's the sound of the hawk, if you can hear that. Crows are up here pecking on this old dead tree up here. Built a kingfisher over here. See if we can get him. No, we missed him. Maybe next time. So we're back at the car now. We're going to fill our mind with some positive information through literature and learning that's the l in the walk so we're reading the eight pillars of prosperity by james allen uh 1911 contents preface eight pillars the first pillar is energy economy integrity system sympathy sincerity impartiality self-reliance the temple of prosperity so we're just going to read a little bit of this every day it's not a big book but i don't know how long it's going to take to get through it just a little bit every day and then we'll get through it so we're starting from the beginning the preface it is popularly supposed that a greater prosperity for individuals or nations can only come through a political and social reconstruction this cannot be true apart from the practice of the moral virtues in the individuals that comprise a nation. Better laws and social conditions will always follow a higher realization of morality among the individuals of a community. But no legal enactment can give prosperity to, nay, it cannot prevent the ruin of a man or nation that has become lax and decadent in the pursuit and practice of virtue. The moral virtues are the foundation and support of prosperity as they are the soul of greatness. They endure forever and all the works of man which endure are built upon them. Without them there is neither strength, stability, nor substantial reality, but only ephemeral dreams. To find moral principles is to have found prosperity, greatness, truth, and is therefore to be strong, valiant, joyful, and free. That's the preface by James Allen, England. So chapter one, eight pillars. Prosperity rests upon a moral foundation. It is popularly supposed to rest upon an immoral foundation, that is upon trickery, sharp practice, deception, and greed. One commonly hears even an otherwise intelligent man declare that no man can be successful in business unless he is dishonest. Thus, regarding business prosperity, a good thing, as the effect of dishonesty, a bad thing. Such a statement is superficial and thoughtless and reveals a total lack of knowledge of moral causation, as well as a very limited grasp of the facts of life. It is as though one should sow henbane and reap spinach or erect a brick house on a quagmire. Things impossible in the natural order of causation and therefore not to be attempted. The spiritual or moral order of causation is not different in principle, but only in nature. The same law obtains in things unseen and thoughts and deeds as in things seen in natural phenomena. Man sees the processes in natural objects and acts in accordance in accordance with them but not seeing the spiritual processes he imagines that they do not obtain and so he does not act in harmony with them yet these spiritual processes are just as simple and just as sure as the natural processes they are indeed the same natural modes of manifesting in the world of mind 
all the parables and a large number of the sayings of the great teachers are designed to illustrate this fact. The natural world is the mental world made visible. The seen is the mirror of the unseen. The upper half of a circle is in no way different from the lower half, but its sphericity is reversed. The material and the mental are not two detached arcs in the universe. They are the two halves of a complete circle. The natural and the spiritual are not at eternal enmity, but in the true order of the universe are eternally at one. It is in the unnatural, in the abuse of function and faculty, where division arises and where main is rested back with repeated sufferings from the perfect circle from which he has tried to depart. Every process in matter is also a process in mind. Every natural law has its spiritual counterpart. So we're going to stop right there. That's page one. So that was just page one we just read there. We'll continue next time. Thanks for hanging out today. Uh, hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Roger over and out.